Hello everyone, Peppo here. I've been asked by quite some people to upload a guide regarding how to play Longsword in Sunbreak, so today I will try to provide you with a general idea of how to play Longsword from a simple casual way to something more advanced. Longsword is a counter-based weapon, which means you need to learn the monster's pattern if you want to pull the best out of this weapon. Monster's knowledge is the first step to mastering Longsword. Knowing the monster means being able to time correctly the counter and ultimately deal good damage. However, this is easier said than done. It is not a simple thing to learn all monster's attacks, it requires a lot of time and effort. That's why the counter approach to the monster is something you will sharpen throughout the experience and it's not something you will learn from morning to night. Longsword in Sunbreak has many counters, exactly 5, but some of them are easier than others and those are generally preferred for inexperienced players. Using counters allows the hunter to evade the monster's attack and deal damage at the same time. However, they are also necessary since you can level up the spirit gauge faster and that's one of the most important aspects for Longsword. In fact, reaching the red spirit gauge level not only boosts your attack and element by 12%, but also allows you to use high damage attacks like Spirit Helmbreaker and Spirit Release Lash. For beginners, I highly suggest playing using Silpine Sakura Slash and Foresight Slash to level up the Spirit Gauge quicker, and executing the Spirit Release Lash to deal high damage during openings. Sakura Slash is relatively simple to use. It consumes one wire bug, levels up the Spirit Gauge if it connects, and deals a decent amount of damage, especially if used with good elemental longswords. The downside of this move is its warbar cooldown. It takes about 36 seconds, so you won't be able to spam it, unfortunately. This silkbind attack occupies the fourth slot in your switch skills loadout. Force Slash is the most friendly counter of longsword, as it is pretty forgiving on the timing and can be followed up with a spirit round slash if Force Slash landed and was timed correctly. This is the very first counter that longsword beginners should learn to use. Despite not dealing a lot of damage, Force Slash is definitely the easiest counter to time and land on the monsters, and so one of the fastest ways to level up the spirit gauge without any big trouble for new longsword users. Force Slash is part of the weapon's moveset and it's not a switch skill. On the second slot of the switch skill, we can find the Sacred Sheet combo. Equipping this witch skill allows you to use this particular way of sheeting your longsword which can lead to two different attacks. If you release the buttons before the sheeting is completed, you will perform a counter, which is definitely more complicated than Force Slash and does require a good amount of practice, but it's not too hard to time it once you get how it works, and it can be followed up with a spirit round slash if timed correctly. If you complete the sheeting, you get into a second animation in which the longsword will be charged by consuming the spirit gauge levels, after which you can perform a spirit release lash by releasing the buttons. The more the spirit gauge levels consumed, the stronger the attack will be. This attack is the strongest one of longsword, but it also is the one that requires the most time to prepare and perform it. It's worth noting that the Sacred Sheath works extremely well with Sacred Slash as it allows you to connect more Sakura Slash in a row in a very short amount of time. The second slot of your switch skill loadout is the Spirit Round Slash combo, as it works perfectly with the Force Slash but also with the Sacred Sheet counter and the Spirit Release Slash, both moves that can be performed by using the Sacred Sheet combo. As for the first slot, you want to use the Drone Double Slash, a unique way of unsheathing your weapon that not only grants Hyper Armor on the first part of the animation, but also can fill 50% of the spirit gauge by just landing it. Finally, the last slot in your switch skill loadout is not too important, but it's worth considering it. Harvest Moon is absolutely not recommended for beginners, so the other switch skill is to reimpose. This counter is even easier than Force Slash, since you don't even need to time it. You just wait for the monster to attack you, and then it activates automatically dealing a decent amount of damage in exchange for the loss of one spirit gauge level. The only issue is that this silkbind attack consumes two warbugs, and playing with Sakura Slash already will make you short on warbugs, so it's likely that you won't have them available to use for Syrimpos. Remember to use Syrimpos in red gauge, as it deals the highest damage possible. Let's now give a look at the generic build made for these switch skills. Note that this set can be done by anyone as it doesn't come with any charm or cure armor pieces. 
The purpose of this build is to give you a rough idea of the skills you should consider when playing Longsword, more considerations will follow. If you want to reach 100% affinity on a weak spot, it is important to use both Maximum Might and Critical Draw. In fact, Critical Draw is necessary here to land critical hits by using the Spirit Release Lash. Let me explain it more in detail. Maximum Might works generally well with Longsword as it gives you affinity when your stamina is at max, and Longsword is one of those weapons that don't consume any stamina while performing its moves. However, with the addition of the Sacred Sheet combo in Sunbreak, and specifically the Sacred Sheet Focus, aka the Charging Stance, your character can move in any of the four directions, allowing you to reposition or evade before landing the Spirit Release Lash. In doing so though, you do consume stamina, and so Maximum Might is not active anymore. So you need another skill that grants affinity, and that skill is Critical Draw. Warbug Whisperer 3 is a must on Longsword as it reduces the cooldown of your Warbug by 20% and increases the duration of the third Warbug from 90 to 117 seconds. A quick side note, did you know that the Gold and Ruby Warbugs can also reduce the Warbug's cooldown and stack with Warbug Whisperer 3? When owning one of these two Warbugs, your Warbug cooldown is reduced by 15%, which means together with Warbug Whisperer 3, your total cooldown is reduced by 38%. Next time you see one of these Warbugs on the map, make sure to collect them. They last 3 minutes, so definitely not a bad deal. Quick Sheath is the only thing that matters, you guys already know that, so I don't have to add anything else here. Then we have Attack Boost, Critical Eye, Weakness Exploit and Critical Boost. Simply put there for damage purposes. If you're going to use a charm and query armor pieces, you should also consider adding elemental attack to this build in case you play with an elemental longsword. Which other skills would I recommend specifically for a longsword beginner? Well, Evade Extender might help quite a bit when sidestepping before landing the Spirit Release Lash. It makes it easier to reposition and get away from the monster's attacks. Definitely a skill you want to consider if you struggle with landing that attack. At level 1 it increases the sidestep distance of the Sacred Sheet Focus by 15%, at level 2 by 25%, and at level 3 by 35%. This recommended playstyle excels in a multiplayer scenario, as the monster can target the other players and so gives you more opening to attack with the Spirit Release Lash. However, even in a solo scenario this playstyle is decent, but of course more precision will be required from the hunter, as the openings are fewer and the monster will keep targeting you, so a fair amount of counters, being Force Slash or Sacred Sheath counter, will be necessary. At an intermediate level, you can start by having more diversity with your red and blue scrolls. Longsword is one of the few weapons in Sunbreak that uses almost all its switch skills, so getting used to the switch skills swap is fundamental when playing around with all these switch skills. It's time to make use of the Ice Priest Lash now. This counter was heavily nerfed from Rise to Sunbreak, as its motion value got reduced by almost 50%. Nonetheless, even though its attack power got demolished, it still plays a valuable role during Longsword gameplay. In fact, timing it correctly and connecting it will level up the Spirit Gauge immediately, and the damage is superior to Force Slash and Sacred Sheath counter. The downsides of this move are essentially two. It's long animation, which can lead to some troubles if performed on specific monsters' attacks, as your hunter will not be able to move immediately after performing this action. So the solution is either to read the monster's attack before, and so avoiding using the Esprit Slash, or direct it in a way that the following monster's attack will not hit you. This is the reason why I think this counter is a bit too complicated to use for a beginner. The second downside is its tight counter window and the lack of hyper armor. To make a quick comparison, with both Force Slash and Cypher Sheet counter, they have respectively 40 and 24 counter frames, while the Esprit Slash has just 17. It also doesn't have any hyper armor on a successful counter, while both Force Slash and Sacred Sheath counter have it. For the people who are not familiar with this term, hyper armor is a particular state that grants resistance to the knockbacks, except pins, and reduces the damage received. This means if you time correctly a Force Slash or a Sacred Sheath counter, but after it you get hit, your character will not receive any knockback but just absorb the damage something similar to the Rocksteady Mantle effect of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Well, I don't want to talk too much in depth regarding the counters, otherwise this video would last 2 hours, so let's move on. 
In order to use Jesper Slash, you need to equip the special sheet combo switch skill in the second slot of your switch skill loadout. By doing so, you can now perform the special sheeting and execute either an Jesper Slash, aka the counter, or an Yai Slash that gradually refers the Spirit Gauge. In combination with the special sheet combo, you want to use the Spirit Reckoning combo, which will substitute the Spirit Round Slash combo. This Spirit combo has a slightly higher damage output than the Spirit Round Slash one, but it's harder to land and requires a certain amount of practice. The reason why I suggest using it with the special sheet combo is that after a correctly timed the Spirit Slash, you can now follow it up with a Dividing Slash, which is way faster than a Spirit Blade 3 from the Spirit Round Slash combo, and so you are ready to connect other actions earlier as well. As for the fourth reach skill slot, I recommend using the Swarm Kick, which leads into Spirit Helmbreaker. It works extremely well with the Yai Spirit Slash, as you can perform it right after landing that counter, basically the most common and efficient combo of Rise. Helmbreaker, like the Yai Spirit Slash, got nerfed as well in terms of damage, but what changed the most is its warbar cooldown that got increased from 20 to 32 seconds. On the first lot of your switch skill loadout, you will still use the Drone Double Slash. It just is an improvement from the regular Step Slash, so there's no reason to not use it on both scrolls. The same applies to the last slot, as you will continue using the Serene Pose. The build and core skills will not change this time around, but using a charm and augmenting your armor using the career crafting system can allow you to slot other skills that might be useful for you. One of these could be Evaded Window, which extends the iframes of evasive actions like the sidestep during second sheet focus, so it makes it easier to dodge the monster attacks before landing the spirit release lash but it still requires a fair amount of precision and monster's knowledge. This playstyle using both red and blue scrolls works pretty well both in multiplayer and solo. The main advantage of having different switch skills on the scrolls is a better adaptation to the monsters you are going to hunt. For example, at the beginning of a fight you can use a special sheath plus the Ice Spirit Slash on a monster's roar, dealing more damage than a Force Ice Slash or Sacred Sheath counter, and after that swap scrolls and use Sakura to level up the Spirit Gauge. If you then have a tiny opening, you can swap once again and perform a Helmbreaker for example, then go back and do a Sakura Slash to regain the Spirit Gauge level. You can even play with a Yai Spirit Slash, and when you get a topo or a long opening you can swap, perform a Sacred Sheet plus Sacred Sheet Focus, and finally a Spirit Release Slash. There are way more combinations with such diversity on the Switch skill scrolls, you just need to practice, and eventually you will be able to efficiently maneuver between red and blue scrolls. At an advanced level, Longsword finally starts to pull out its true potential. There are many different playstyles you can master once you reach a such level, but here I'll just mention and explain the ones I consider to be the most valid. All the following playstyles require a deep knowledge of both the monster and the Longsword, as well as a fair amount of experience. Let's start with the most fun playstyle in my opinion. The Redirection Longsword. As the name suggests, we'll make use of the skill Redirection. You want to have this skill at level 2 in your build, so that if you time correctly a switch skill swap as the monster is about to attack you, you can perform a backward evade and refill part of the warbag gauge, speeding up its cooldown considerably. This skill requires really good timing, but in return it lets you spam way more seatbind attacks like Sakura Slash. As for the switch skills, I would recommend using the same ones for both red and blue scrolls since you can't predict if you are going to use redirection in red scroll or blue scroll and so you don't know which scroll you will end up with. You can either use redirection with spirit reckoning, special sheath, helm breaker or spirit round slash, sacred sheath, sakura slash. I prefer the second one just because I like being able to spam sakura slash, but that's just my preference. The second playstyle I want to talk about is the Harvest Moon Longsword. This way of playing the Longsword rotates around the Harvest Moon, the switch skill which substitutes the Serene Pose in the last lot. This playstyle, different from the previous one, is not recommended for all the monsters. I made a tier list on Twitter of the monsters which are good to fight by using the Silpine Ring and the ones that are bad, so if you are in doubt regarding playing with it or not, you can have a look at this tier list I made link in the description. This playstyle is probably the strongest of all ones. Inside the Harvest Moon, every counter gets additional hits depending on both the counter type and the spirit gauge level. After Tidal Update 2, Capcom managed to fix the additional hits issue that prevented the hits to appear, 
when the monster was moving away in a short amount of time after the counter landed. So now this playstyle definitely has more potential than ever. It's obvious that if you want to play inside the Harvest Moon, you need to perfectly counter all the monster's attacks and never get hit, so high skill is required. There are some specific monsters where Harvest Moon is highly recommended, such as Shogun Sinatower or Rajan. In these cases, you should definitely consider trying this move. As for the rest of your switch skills, you basically want to have Spirit Reckoning, Special Sheath fixed on both red and blue scrolls, while the 4th and 5th slots might change depending on your preferences. You can either play more safely by using Temporary Spirit Blade instead of Handbreaker, or you can use this last mentioned one if you feel more aggressive. It both depends on the monster and your confidence, I would say. For the last slot, you want to have Harvest Moon on the red scroll and Serene Pose on the blue scroll, so that once you cast the Silpine Ring, you can swap scrolls and play with Serene Pose inside the Harvest Moon. This is really important as this counter is the most powerful one inside this circle. It gets 4 additional hits, the same as the Ice Spirit Slash, and this is the reason why these two counters pull out the highest potential in combination with the Harvest Moon. Here you can see the number of additional hits for every counter as well as the extra hit roll multiplier. Thanks to DTL Nor for providing this table. If you really would like to try this playstyle on some monsters but you don't feel extremely confident yet, I suggest using the skilled Intrepid Heart at level 1 at least, for example by equipping the Flaming Espinas Arps. By doing so you have some margin of error and missing a counter for the first time won't penalize you if you already charge the blue bar. In fact, this skill negates knockbacks and reduces the incoming damage by 50% at level 1 and 75% at level 2. In order to fill up the bar completely you need 34 hits with the longsword. The last playstyle I want to talk about is a mix between Sakura, Sacred Sheath and Harvest Moon Longsword. Basically, you keep Sakura Slash, Sacred Sheath and Harvest Moon on the red scroll and then you use the Spirit Slash, Helmbreaker or Temporary Spirit Slash and Serene Pose on the blue scroll. The idea of this style is playing inside the Harvest Moon but not all the time. Depending on the monster's circumstance, you can swap between one and the other style. For example, on an afflicted monster, when the monster is enraged, the Harvest Moon playstyle is more advantageous as the monster attacks you frequently, allowing you to counter many times. However, when the monster gets out of the afflicted state, it becomes exhausted and so he will not attack you that often anymore. So you will have more openings to deal massive damage using the Spirit Re Slash. This style is definitely the most difficult one to master but it's also the most creative one in my opinion. There are many other playstyles you can create and try yourself with Longsword. Don't just stop at the ones I just mentioned. Every Longsword user has his own playstyle and nobody should feel forced to play a weapon as another person says. Feel absolutely free to play however you want, the most important thing is having fun, never forget that. There are many aspects of Longsword I'd like to talk about more in depth, but such videos require a lot of time and effort and it's really not easy for me to work on them so frequently. I hope you understand. And with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one. Bye!